Whoa. Uh, okay. That intro was entirely too epic for what's about to come, and uh, I would like to apologize to you guys in advance, but the entire budget for this production was spent on that introduction, so... Oof, I guess let's just move on. So if you've been following the Instagram or the Facebook page, you know that I've been t starting to do more cosplay props, and I've been filming them. So this series is going to be, I guess, just a video series on how I make the props I make, and I'm not really quite sure how to do that, so let's just call this an experimental episode. As you can see, I'm cutting out the Warglaive pattern out of the paper that I have already pre-printed. And now that we have it cut out, we're going to go ahead and just look at it and make sure that it looks right. Maybe spin it around a little bit, check the size on the hand. Yep, there we go, perfect. Now let's move on over to the foam. So I need to get four of these blades out, and for the first one, I just kind of set the pattern down and went freehand with it, and it worked out okay, but it was kind of awkward. So uh, I'm going to try to basically temporarily adhere this to the foam using these little dot things. It doesn't really work out, so I can't say I'd recommend it, but uh, for a shape this complex, it does make it a little easier. And now through the magic of video editing, we have four of these blades drawn out. That's right, I bet you didn't know it, but I am in fact a sorcerer. Uh, let's get ready to cut these guys out. Now they say you should never judge a man for the size of his... well, you know. Uh, let the same be said about the size of one's cutting mat. I know my cutting mat is very, very small. Uh, I cannot stress highly enough, please get yourself a larger cutting mat. This thing is really only good for small paper projects and makes cutting out large foam pieces quite the hassle. I need to get a new one soon, but for now, let's get our little guy under there and uh, start cutting out these foam pieces. I know I'm missing the lines here, but don't worry, we will get to that. Right now, all I'm doing is basically cutting the shape away from the larger piece of foam so that it's a little easier to handle. And now we're going to go back in and cut the blade shapes out of the foam finally. There's going to be a total of four pieces, one, two, three, and four. Now with these four pieces cut out, we can start to position them apart from each other, maybe get an idea of how large we want the handle to be. For the core, we're going to be using a slightly modified half-inch PVC pipe. Uh, you can get this at basically any Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that. I'll let you know what I mean by modified here in a little bit, but for right now, all I'm doing is trying to line the PVC pipe up with the blades and make a little bit of a mark on them so I know where the pipe is going to end up being. Uh, when I put the foam pieces together. And now getting back to that modification. This pipe is a little bit too big to use for these two pieces of foam. If I were to use this as it is now, frankly, the PVC pipe would show through the prop and it wouldn't look very good. So what I need to do is I need to use this heat gun to heat up the PVC pipe and gently, carefully squish it down using a pair of pliers. Uh, this process does take a little bit of time and of course you are using a high heat heat gun. It's very hot. Please be careful if you do make this modification for any of your props. For example, if you're using a pair of full metal pliers like I am, don't leave those pliers in a position where you will be pointing a heat gun towards them. Metal conducts heat very easily, and when you go to grab them, it's going to hurt. What did I just say? God, idiots. Anyway, we're going to continue this painstaking process for both sides of the handle. You don't have to flatten it too much. In fact, I wouldn't flatten it completely because then it loses a lot of its structural integrity. What we're looking for is more like an oval, something not quite full shape. You just want to kind of squeeze it down to half its original shape. This is what it looked like before and then after. See how much flatter it is? Our next order of business is to sand out the center parts of the blades. This is where our flattened PVC is going to rest and hold on to the blades using some contact cement later. So what I'm doing is putting on a drum sanding bit on my Dremel. I'm gonna basically be using this at an angle to help sand out the middle. I guess if this were on the outside of the blade, it'd be called a fuller, so is this an inner? I don't know. We're gonna sand it out. You don't wanna go too far. Don't go through the piece completely. Just go down about halfway for all four pieces. You can see here that I have multiple measure marks. One of the things my dad taught me growing up is measure twice and cut once. And let me tell you, I would not be happy if I had to cut out another one of these blades. 
so just make sure your measurements are in the right spot. Once you finish sanding, just go ahead and get rid of any leftover foam dust, and then make sure to check to see that the PVC will fit inside of the crevice that you've now made. If it doesn't fit, just go ahead and sand it a little more, sand a little wider. Just keep going until you're happy. Once you're done sanding out the inner for two of your pieces, just go ahead and put the pieces together and make sure that they fit around the PVC pipe rather effortlessly. Uh, Again, make any corrections that you need to. Now's your only time really to do that. And once you have all four pieces sanded out, we can move on to the next step. All right, now's the time that we get to start gluing things together and making this look more like a weapon. What I'm using here is a can of weld wood contact cement. Uh, it's a permanent bond contact cement. So this stuff will never come apart unless you completely destroy the prop, which why would you be working really hard on this? Now, I did not film the application of this because it was snowing outside and I don't want to get my camera all snowy. But uh, as a general rule, please use the contact cement outside. The fumes are flammable and it just smells really, really bad. And the last thing you want to do is inhale this stuff. So do as I say, not as I do. All I did here, I put some of the contact cement down the middle of the inners for two of the blades. I also applied some contact cement to the one side of both of our flattened parts of the PVC, and we're gonna let this dry for about 20 minutes. It sounds weird, but trust me, when you use contact cement, you want it to dry almost completely before adhering it. If you try to have things glued together while it's still wet, it's just gonna slide around. There's not gonna be any real bond made. Just trust me, just let it dry and then put it together. You'll see what I mean. So, uh, I guess we just wait now. Oh, wait, I can fast forward. Okay, so after some time has elapsed, I'm going to push the glued side of the PVC into the inners on the pieces that I already glued. This will pretty much be permanent, so eyeball it, make sure it's where you want it to be before putting any real pressure on it. Uh, once you glue this down, there is no going back unless you start over, and don't do that, just do it right the first time. Uh, the next step is to take all of the pieces, including the piece that we've just glued together. We're going to put contact cement over everything. All the backsides, all the pieces we want glued together. And this really should have just stayed outside while it was drying, but honestly it was so cold outside that I don't think the contact cement would have adhered correctly and it would have just caused problems down the road. So I got to sit in these fumes for a long, long time. Please. Please don't do this. <laughs> okay, so now after a little more time has elapsed, now it's time to put the blades together. Now, you have to be super careful with this because you want these blades to line up properly. Don't worry if they're a little offset, we can fix that in the sanding process a little later. Carefully put all of the pieces together, being sure to squeeze the foam together pretty tight like you're trying to make a world's tightest sandwich or something, I don't know. What I'm trying to say is you want to apply pressure to all surfaces here so that it all bonds together. It's still going to take the contact cement a little time to cure, so what you want to do is after you have both blades assembled, look for something heavy like a really heavy book or a treasure chest containing Legend of Zelda strategy guides. Find a way to apply a little pressure on top of the blades so that they can cure completely and they won't come apart on you while you're marveling at all the work you've just done. The last shape we need to make for this little puzzle of ours is going to be the shield piece that hand, that acts as a handguard for the weapon. Now, everyone knows the best way to make a shield is to start by petting a cat for power. The petting of a cat is a ritual that goes back to early Egyptian times, so really, you don't want to tempt fate here. Just pet the cat. So this piece of scrap foam is going to work well for us for the shield, but uh, on the front side, there are a couple of divots in the foam, and... At first I thought this was going to be a problem, but honestly, it's just going to add to the character of the shield. The weapon itself is quite old and would have suffered some damage, so it works. Okay, so just like before, I'm using a pattern to draw out the shape that I want on the foam, and we'll go ahead and cut it out. I'm making sure to take a little time here to bend the shield into the shape that I want it to be in, and at the same time I'm going to also size it on the weapon to make sure that the shield looks like it's the appropriate size for the weapon. Okay, looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead now and cut out a few more patterns. We're looking for a couple of shapes here. There's a dome-like shape in the center here, which other people have used a gemstone here, but uh, in the original footage it's just kind of like a bump, like a little shield nipple, so I'm just going to recreate that. There's also a little fang thing that comes up the middle to support the little shield nipple and then there's two fangs at the top left and top right so we need a pattern for them as well. With the patterns made I'm going to go ahead and mark up the foam for each of these pieces and then proceed to cut them out. 
With everything cut out, now's a good chance to size everything up, make sure everything looks good before we move on to sanding down the shield pieces. Once again, I'm going to be using the drum sander bit for my Dremel to get these down around the shape that I want. And it is only now, as I'm recording this voiceover, that I realize I have forgotten to film the part of me actually sanding these pieces down. So I apologize about that, I promise I did actually do it, but uh, I guess let's move on to a little more of the shield work. The shield itself has some border detailing, but on the inside it has the engraving of a star. I'm basically going to be drawing a star twice to make a thick line that will later paint gold. So what I'm doing now is I'm marking out the spots where the points of the star will be so I can draw it out and plan out where I'm going to be digging out foam. All right, so using a different Dremel bit this time, I don't know what it's called, but it looks like this guy. We're just gonna go over those lines that I just made. I'm sure this isn't an engraver, but it works really well on this foam. It just leaves behind some burrs that need to be pulled out sanded down, but besides that, it works great on this material, at least in my experience so far. So I'm just going to use the plier bit of my handy little multi-tool here and just pull out those burrs and uh, get ready for the next step. So before I work on continuing to detail the front of the shield, I think now is a good time to address how I'm going to adhere it to the weapon. My idea was to create a couple of little stilts, if you will, something that we can wrap around the PVC and glue into place. A stilt of this design should allow the shield to adhere to the PVC more securely while giving it the elevation that we need in order to be able to hold on to it. Because as of right now, the shield is just pressing up against the PVC and there's no way to wrap our hand around. Okay, so back to the front of the shield. You'll see that there's some blue painter's tape on it. All I did was apply the painter's tape to the shield and kind of shape it down or draw on it to the size that I wanted it to. And then transferred it from the prop to a piece of paper so that I can create a pattern. What I'm doing here is I'm going to be creating the intricate outer detailing that you can see around the shield on the Warglaive. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be to the best of my ability. After we draw on the pattern for both sides, it's going to be back to our tiny little cutting mat here to cut out all the shapes that we just made. To me, this part was the most tedious, and I don't really know why. It was kind of the easiest in my opinion, but whatever. After we're done with that, we're going to transfer these now-made patterns to a piece of thin foam. This is like craft foam you can pick up at Walmart or something. It's nothing fancy at all. And from there, we're going to draw the pattern on. Now, when cutting out this craft foam, I highly advise that you cut out all of the little inside pieces before cutting the piece out of the sheet of foam. This way, when you're cutting out the inside pieces of the foam, you're not dragging the foam around and chancing a rip. So just cut out all the little inside pieces and then cut the piece out. And now with both sides cut out, it's time to get out our trusty little blue glue gun. That was kind of hard to say. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be gluing down these little side pieces here and making everything a little bit more permanent. Whoops, forgot to make the top piece, so I'm going to go ahead and make the pattern for that now and cut that out and then glue it down with a hot glue gun. And there we go, we have everything we need to make the shield. We are nearing the final steps of the shaping process here. Uh, next thing we're gonna be doing here is sanding down the blade finally and giving it a little shape. One thing to remember when using a powered sander like this Dremel that I've been using, make sure you have safety glasses and ideally some type of face mask on. You don't want the foam dust to shoot up into your eyes, nose, or mouth. It is not a pleasant experience. And now with my face properly protected, we're gonna be taking the drum bit sander for the Dremel and taking it across all the edges of the blade. Earlier on when I said that sometimes when you adhere the two pieces together you're gonna have some or some foam that you're gonna have to sand down and fix well that's this step we're gonna try to get everything as even and as straight as we can this would probably be a lot easier if we had some type of table sander but we simply don't have one and even if we did I don't think the apartment complex we're living in would let us have it so to the Dremel we go and now on to what I would consider to be the scariest part. If you're like me and are fairly under-experienced, I would recommend you practice on a piece of scrap foam like I did before I started this. But now is the time to start the bevel. We have to give the blade a little shape, a little bit of a bevel. And luckily for me, since this is such a demonic, kind of, I guess I'd say kind of organic weapon, uh, having a disheveled bevel probably isn't as big of a deal as it could be. But we're going to try to carefully give the edge a little bit of shape so it looks more like a blade when held. And take your time with this, there's no rush, there's no reason to rush, unless it's like Conde is two days away and you're not sure if you're gonna make it, just when you're doing something like this, take it slow. The difference between a rushed job and a slow but intentional job will be very noticeable. 
All right, we're getting into home stretch of this blade shaping. The next thing we need to do is engrave the designs into the sides of the blades. And what I did to make this easier on myself, I took the original pattern that I had and I used a hole puncher. At each hard point in the design, I punched a hole and was able to just use a permanent marker to mark on the foam prop where each of these points were. And then I just went in and freehand drew the rest of it. Is it an exact science? No, but it works for what we're trying to do here. So after I have the design drawn on all four sides of the weapon, I switched back to that little doodad we used earlier to engrave the design into the shield, and I take it away. I honestly thought this part of the process would have taken a lot less time than it did, but once again, your patience and deliberate movements will reward you with something that looks incredible. I was very lucky while I was working on these blades to have the cat come in and supervise what I was doing, making sure I had everything done right the first time. And now with all sides engraved completely, it's time to give the blade a little bit of battle damage. A few nicks here, a few scratches there, just things to make it look like it's been used. It's time to go in with the multi-tools pliers and start to pull out the foam and the engraving that was left behind. You know, the burrs and the stuff that didn't quite just get vaporized. And with that, our prop is ready to be painted. We should be completely done with the building part at this moment. I apologize for the quality of the film that you're seeing, but I am in fact using my cell phone as I did not want to bring my camera outside. We're going to start by applying a coat of Mod Podge to the prop to kind of seal it and help the paint apply a little easier. Uh, I always start with a couple of test sprays to make sure that the nozzle is clear and therefore will apply to whatever I'm painting properly the first time. Pay attention to my technique here. You'll see I'm using short bursts of the aerosol can. I'm never starting or ending over the prop. This is so that this is whatever we're spraying on doesn't pool in one specific spot and come out looking pretty bad. It's very easy to over apply whatever you're spraying on to your props so be very very careful and remember that you're going to be doing multiple coats anyway so you don't need to have it completely saturated the first time. I do have this set up so that I can apply my spray paints or my sealants or whatever. I, could, I have it set up so that I can apply to both sides at once and cut down on my dry time. Either way, make sure you're giving each coat about 25 to 30 minutes to somewhat dry before applying the next coat. I would recommend that after you're done spray painting whatever it is you're painting to give it about 24 hours to dry completely before moving on to your next step. I would also advise waiting to paint or seal anything before you have all of the physical parts ready to set up. It just makes the painting phase go by a lot quicker, so you can work on one thing while another thing is drying. After two coats of the Mod Podge sealant, I went ahead and did two coats of a matte primer in white. I didn't film it here, I'm sorry, it was, I got a little excited towards the end of the project here. After doing two coats of the white primer, I went in and used an olive colored spray paint for the blades since they are green as depicted in the game, and I thought this kind of a darker green would have looked better. Uh, as a general rule, whenever I make a cosplay prop, I tend to go on the darker side of colors. There's nothing wrong with using vibrant colors, but to me it feels a little more real life, I suppose, by using a darker color. But you can paint your props any way you want. No one's going to kick your door down and tell you that that's wrong, and if they try to, well, that's illegal. Defend yourself in any way you see fit. Hell, you just made a sword. Hit them with the sword. Nekamore Studios does not condone any acts of violence. Alright, we're coming down to home stretch here, so let's apply some detailing to the shield. For example, there's quite a bit of gold pieces on the shield, so what we're going to use is we're going to use this metallic acrylic paint. It's ink and gold or something to that effect. Either way, we're going to be doing a couple of coats of this over the pertinent parts, the parts that are gold, specifically the inner star, the little shield nipple, and the detailing around the outside of the shield. Again, we're going to give a little dry time in between each coat, but we are going to apply this acrylic a couple of times just to make sure that the gold color is nice and bold. I actually stepped away while doing the voiceover and I found the exact bottle I was using. It's a metallic Inca gold acrylic paint from Folk Art. The thing about this acrylic is that when you apply it, it doesn't look metallic. In fact, it looks like a pale yellow, like it may have gone bad or something. But when the paint dries, you're really going to see that Inca gold color shine through. So trust in your acrylics, or if you have a hard time trusting inanimate objects, do a test piece. Just take a piece of foam that you can spray paint the same way that you did, and then just apply the paint and see what happens. It'll be worth it, I promise. And now let's finish off this shield by weathering it up a little bit. And no, I don't mean that we're going to ask whether or not the shield can spell weather or weather. I mean weather as in age or make it look old or used. And in this regard, we're going to be applying some black acrylic paint mixed with other colors and then almost immediately removing it. This will leave behind a little bit of a residue of the paint that will give the shield prop that dirty, old, aged look. 
This is called weathering. There are many ways to which you can achieve weathering on a prop. Uh, some people prefer dry brushing, some people prefer using ink and spreading it on with a large sponge brush. But in this case, we're going to be using a couple of different methods. It was mostly experimental, if I'm honest, but what I ended up doing is mixing a little bit of the metallic silver with some gray and some black and applying it using a small brush filling the crevices where the trimming on the outside edges, letting it sit for a couple minutes, and then using Q-tips to remove the majority of the paint. After doing this for both sides for the outer trimming, I ended up taking a Q-tip and going into the grooves made around that center star with the same silvery black color, and using the same technique of letting it dry for a little bit and then wiping out the excess. And I mean, already, man, looking so good. All right, two important details left to cover, one of which being the fangs on this shield. They're looking a little too pristine. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a paper towel, dipping it into the darker colors of my little lid mixture here, and basically brushing it over. This particular foam, when sanded down, leaves an open porous grain-like look, so it takes on the paint very, very well. So I ended up using this to my advantage, and I must say, after a couple of strokes here, those fangs are looking as good as they could be. I'm hoping that the smooth, flat surface of the shield takes the paint nearly as well as these fangs did. And luckily for me, because of the type of hammered spray paint that I used, I was able to weather the front of the shield fairly successfully, using the same rolled up paper towel dab and hope method. I don't... I don't mean dab like the me... I mean like dab into the... God damn it. This is what the shield looked like before the weathering, and this is what it looks like after the weathering. Why did I make two shields, you ask? We'll get back to that. Okay, and we're pretty much done. All that we really need to do now is to seal the paint, and that's as simple as taking it outside and spraying it down with some Mod Podge, but we also need to get a handle on here. You know, something comfortable to hold on to. Oh, I almost forgot, we need to glue the shield down too, and again, I used contact cement for this, but uh, let's move on to the gripping. So I have this cosplay rubber. I don't remember what the brand is, but it's basically this type of rubber that you're supposed to use for like tools and stuff for like workbenches, but I've been using it for handles, and it's been working out well enough. All we're gonna do is measure out a strip of this rubber and adhere it to the handle using some contact cement. And we'll finish it off by going over that with a piece of this brown felt-like material. I'm sorry, I really should have gotten the names of these things, but I don't have them on hand, I apologize. Just use any brown-looking cloth or felt that you want to cover your handle, if that's something that interests you. We can save ourselves from having to be exposed to that terrible smelling contact cement by using a hot glue gun to adhere this brown material to the handle. Trust me, this is going to work out much better for you in the end. You don't need to expose yourself to the contact cement, the handle will never come apart, and you can also glue the open gap in the shield so that it never comes apart ever. Honestly, using a hot glue gun here is pretty much living out your best life, so you're welcome. And there we go, we have completed the Warglaive of Azanoth. But let's be real, having one Warglaive of Azanoth is pretty worthless, so why not complete the set? Remember how I said we were going to get back to why I had two shields? Well, I went ahead and made the second one so that we didn't have to split apart the Warglaives. That's right, we have them both. Thank you, Illidan. It took me five goddamn years to farm them in the game. Luckily, it only took me a couple weeks to make them in real life. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm planning on having a few more episodes like this, the next one being the Big Goron Sword. I just actually finished that up today, so I should be able to start that pretty soon. But as always, I hope you guys stay awesome. I hope you guys start building. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do. And as always, I will catch you in the next one.